Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33. It's kind of a cold morning, but if you have a good coat, you can pump gas. And I pumped gas this morning and didn't feel a thing. But it's a beautiful day because we all woke up this morning. And I am so excited about this day, so, so, so excited, because when you see and hear from my guests, you'll be excited too. You can call in at 313-868-0342, 868-0351, or 868-4336, and that's area code 313. You can also get us on the web at www.tv33whpr.com, and also there is an app for that. So I am very excited about this morning, and I would like to first introduce my first guest to you, and my first guest is a friend a very, very talented woman, a great director, a great actress, Miss Aku Kadojo. Good morning. Good morning, Brenda. How lovely to see you. You too. I mean, you are the world traveler of the world travelers. I mean, <laughs> this woman is wanted all over. And um, Aku, right now you're down at Wayne State, right? Yes. Yes. I'm guest directing this time at Wayne State, so. Guest directing. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Well, let's go into a little bit of a Aku's background. Now, a lot of people, she's very popular in this area, so a lot of people do know Aku. But um, you you were born here, right? Yes, yes. I was born in Detroit. Um, to wonderful parents, Hilda and Donald Vest, yes. who are legends in the community. They are legends in their own right. Yes, I call them the teenagers now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, you know, when we grow up, we can try to be like them. Uh, I yeah. know they got they have me beat already, <laughs> but um, yeah, where'd you go to high school? Cass Tech, of course, Cass. Of course, and um, after Cass, what did you do? I went to New York University. I went to New York University, and I spent three and a half years there. And the day that I graduated, I opened in for colored girls who have considered suicide when the I know, was and I was getting ready to tell the audience that if you didn't know, she was in the original production of For Colored Girls, right? Yes, that's correct. Who were some of the other actresses in that show? Um, well, on the Broadway company was Lori Carlos, Trezana Beverly, um, oh gosh, now you know the memory joggles. Uh, I, um, I went to Australia, uh, let me just kind of go. Right. Around. When I went to Australia, I went with Alfred Woodard, Lynn Whitfield, Mary Alice. Um, oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, Sorette Scott was in it. Um, I worked with Robbie McCauley, who had been my teacher at NYU, and I was in it before, and then she came on board. Oh, wow. So it was just kind of like a who's who. For me, there were a number of actresses that I've been watching at NYU, and then all of a sudden I was on stage with them. Working with them. Yes. Yeah. So how did that feel? That was very exciting at the time because um, you see people that you – really admire and their careers are where you want to be and the wonder you're actually standing on the stage with them um Al scott the director of for colored girls had been my upperclassman um Intizaki shange came to town with paula moss and we were friends in in dance class and they said to me at that time oh you should come to san francisco but then the next year they'd come back to new york and the rest is as they say history did you learn a lot I to. learned, oh my goodness, it was just, you know, coming directly from university and then I into something of that scale. Woody King was one of the produ um, producers with really, Joe Papp. Really, Woody? Yes. So it was Woody, co-produced by Woody King and Joe Papp. Oh my. Yes. Joe Papp That's in, exactly the park. Right. in the park. In the park and all that. So it was just, for me, it was just really exciting because all of a sudden, these are your colleagues. Uh, it reminds me of Lupita Nyong'o, yes. who just graduated from Yale yes. drama, and then she got into uh, 12 Years a Slave. I always want to say four years a slave. I couldn't have been <laughs> a slave for 12 minutes, I tell you. That's right. No, I not mean, me either. I, don't I know, but, you know, it just seemed to, if I could put myself in your shoes, to be working with those great women, it's, it empowered you so much. I could see it empowering you. Absolutely. Well, it gave me an enormous strength. And I've, I mean, I always put in my CV now that I have continued the tradition of the choreo poem, which is a phrase that Ntozaki Shange 
coin, and it's a style of movement with words, with the poetic form, and I've continued to develop that work in my own life, and it's been a lifelong journey. Right. Now, when I, well, I met your parents before I met you, and this was back in the 80s, mm -hmm. and at the time you were in Australia. That is correct. So my life, as I said, I went to um, Australia in 1978 in for Colored Girls, and that company was the one that had Alfre Lynn, you know, Mary Alice, Ruth Anna Graves. Gosh, there were just so many people. And I met my then husband, and then my life took a completely <laughs> different turn. And I, yeah, and I <laughs> have been living there since 1978. That's been my home. I know, and, and I got to meet you when you came home to visit. I was so thrilled about it, and because for your parents, you were a legend for them. When I I couldn't wait to meet you, and um, even though that was like almost about thirty years ago, we're we're still young. Thirty is it? My 33rd no. birthday's coming up. Yeah, and my 34th. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, I only taught 39 oh, yeah. Yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, then you came back here. Yes, I did. You have a daughter, right? Yes, I do. Beautiful girl. Yes, I have a Beautiful. daughter and a granddaughter. Gr a granddaughter. Yes, a nine-year-old granddaughter. What's your granddaughter's name? Amiri. Amiri and Molly daughter? Mann and Zanzi Mann. Wow. And you came back here in what year? Uh, in 2006, I was invited to be the director of the Black Theater Program at Wayne State. So I spent five years here. Right. From 2006 to 2011. And you directed some very great plays. Yes. Really exciting work, really. And, you know, very much keeping the African-American canon alive. You have to. Yeah. I mean, what is a urban university without urban or black theater? That's right. And the rest of the story, when I, you know, when my students would come in to take my literature class, I, I um, said, this is an American story, everybody. This is an American story. You can put the African American in front of it if you'd like, but this is all part of who we are. Right. And let's put this in the puzzle of who we are and how important it is to the in entire story. America. Exactly. Right, right. What were some of the plays that you directed back then? Uh, I directed Zora. I directed Joe Turner's Come and Gone. I directed Flo, um, which was by Will Power, and I got right. to do that. I premiered that as you an premiered ensemble that. work. And speaking of premieres, yes, you're getting ready to premiere another show, and we'll talk about that in one moment because I want the audience to know that You've had an Asian influence, too. Uh, that is correct. Would you tell them about it? Uh, in 2010, I was invited onto the faculty of Yongin University in South Korea. And I decided to step through that open door. It was an opportunity that came. And so I spent two years in South Korea on faculty. And in fact, my um, students who are in the production just had the pleasure of meeting one of my students who spent a week with me from South Korea here in Detroit. I put her on the plane yesterday. Wow, amazing. Yes. So after you finish this show, what's next? Uh, I go back to Australia. I spent the last year with my family and it was time to go home because I'd been away for a while. A little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mom, can you come home please? Oh, oh, yeah. oh I am a mother, yeah. Yeah well, yeah, well, after they get grown and stuff yeah. and raising their own, but they still miss you. You're still a pillar Absolutely. in the family. Yes, and I think, you know, in, the, in these global times, in this world that we move around, you, family is still it. That's it. So that is. I've had to figure out a way, and I've had the great fortune and blessing of being able to work here in Detroit while my parents are growing older, and I spend a good deal of time with them now That's and here, and also now with my daughter and granddaughter. Wow. Now let's talk about this premiere. Let's, it's the Michigan premiere yes. of a great playwright's play. Why don't you tell us about it? It's called In the Red and Brown Water, and it's by Terrell Alvin McCraney. And he, in 2013, he won a MacArthur Genius Fellowship. And I saw his work in 2010 at the Steppenwolf Company, and I was blown away. I'd been reading about his Brothers, uh, the brother brother sister plays. The brother size, yes, yeah. The brother size. And I went to Chicago to see the trilogy, and I was in my seat all afternoon and evening with my mouth agape at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful writing. 
Right, right. And um, I've read up on him. I had, um, because one of my former students was in the brother size out in, oh, yes. out in San Francisco. Yes. And his girlfriend was in the brother sister well the what was the the red and brown water yes Yes, she was and I mean they just raved about him about his writing and everything so tell us of what the play is about well it's let me I I want to I'm going to say a few things first about Terrell I think what I love about his writing Terrell McCraney was born in Miami So he has a very big influence from the Caribbean, from Latin America, and from Africa America. He also grew up in the stone stomp down hood, but he graduated from Yale and he got out of there. So it's a really poignant story. Uh, He loves Shakespeare and he spent two years at the Royal uh, Shakespeare Company in London. His writing goes back and looks at the African myths from the Yoruba tradition. Mm-hmm. And all the characters in the size trilogy are named from Yoruba deities. Uh, in, in the red and brown water, the lead character is Oya, the goddess of wind and thunder. And this young lady can run like the wind. It's a coming of age story. And it's about a young woman who has an opportunity to get a scholarship to university. But due to her mother's illness, she's unable to take it. And then the story unfolds of what happens to a young woman who's unable to leave her circumstance in the hood. And I like to say that Terrell McCraney, by naming these characters Yoruba deities, Ogun, Shango, Oya, Yemoja, he is also saying to our community what we have retained from all those years across from that Atlantic crossing to now, because the Yoruba tradition is alive in the United States, particularly in places like New York, Havana, uh, Miami, Cuba, Brazil, Haiti, these, these traditions are alive and thriving. They made it across and they live. It's in our DNA. So it's, it's what was lost, but what was retained in our memory. So it's you dealing with memory and with these, the deities, have characteristics of nature. Thunder, fire, iron, Ogun, the god of iron. And it's so powerful. Ogun is that brother, that steady brother that is there for you. Shango, the god of fire, he has several wives. Oya was one of his consorts in the traditional myth. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with these stories and I just am deeply excited. Where does it take place? It takes place in a mythical town on the bayou in Louisiana. How wonderful. How wonderful. Well, you know, and there are communities, Yoruba communities, here, here, here also. Oh, yes, yes. Uh-huh. I have to say my, my own, my personal exposure was once I left Detroit and I got to New York, the Yoruba world opened up to me. Right. And then I went on to travel to Cuba and Brazil to follow that Yoruba path. To oh. follow, you know, I, I've been so, it's been, a, now it's been a lifetime study for me once I was exposed to it. Uh, I wanted to know and so doing a play like this is at like arriving at a point and I had to deepen my knowledge again so the door continues to just wa- open wide and say continue your study continue to step through right right so aren't you excited about directing the young people and exposing them to that we have had such a thrilling time <laughs> of exposure, I mean, after the first day of reading and we started talking about what it was about, everybody, just light bulbs have gone off. And each day, each day that we're in rehearsal, light bulbs go off all the time, for me as well. Because everybody is doing their study, they're coming in, they're coming with their information, I come in with mine. We keep analyzing, it's just, that's what's been exciting about this work, is that we continue to analyze, go deeper, read more, find out more, Uh, look at this, listen to this, be with this, see more. Well, do you, do, have they discovered or you discovered some parallels between the Yoruba culture and the African-American culture, so many parallels. Absolutely. There's so many there. It's in our DNA. Yes, it is. That's why, and I call it bone memory. It's our bone memory. We don't ever release this. 
Right. It's our bone memory. But they don't know it. Uh, the general public does not know this. No, no. Right. And we're all finding out. I mean, it's so it's almost becomes it becomes very apparent, you know, who's the wind, who's the fire, <laughs> who's the steady one, who's Ogun, who's the trickster, Elegba and Elegwa, Eshu. It just it becomes apparent in life. And and what we find out is that our African ancestors they studied nature. They lived with nature. We were closer to it. And that people's characteristics, we're like that. We're like the sun. We're like the moon. We're like the wind, the thunder, the lightning, the mountains. Exciting, exciting. And even more exciting, we have two of the actors here this morning, and we're going to yeah. interview them. What, what has it been like uh, as far, well, you've told me, as far as the energy is concerned, it's high energy all the time. High energy all the time, and kudos to my colleague, Michael Barnes, who cast the show for me while, you know, because I had to fly in right. to direct it. But I have a really exciting cast, and they are on top. They're, they're How on top many are in the cast? There are 10 of us. Now, when does the show open? The show opens on February 7th, and it runs for two weekends. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2, and then the following week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2, and 8 p.m. on I, all I was going to yes. say, I, it had to be more than two. I knew it was some, some evening shows. Yes, 8 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and 2 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Okay, and it's at the Bonstell Theater. Wayne State University Bonstell Theater. On, on Woodward. Woodward at Mac. <laughs> And, of course, that's a wonderful theater. And with the size of it, it's still intimate. It's still intimate. And I, I love that theater. I, work, I got an opportunity to work in it a couple of times. And I just think it's a wonderful theater. It's a wonderful venue. And I, I, I can't wait to see the set dressing. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're, we're excited. And it's looking really good. And it's, it's, I've, I've, the style I've chosen to direct it in is uh, utilizing magic realism. Yes, because you're dealing with deities. Yes. And you're dealing with a mythic story of mythic proportions in real life. So I've, I've, I've gone back, and it's, I've flowed back and forth with a kind of magic realist style. Have the actors have to, had to affect any kind of accent? Only one. I, I really push for clarity of text. I want everybody, to, I want my audience to walk away and really understand right. I understand the poetry that. of the words. It's just wonderful. Well, we will take a quick break and we'll be right back with two of the actors from the Red and Brown Water. Good morning, good morning, and welcome again to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33 WHPR. I'm just trying, I don't know which camera I'm on. That's why I'm going every which way. But I am excited this morning because I have two wonderful actors with us. Let's introduce them right now. We have James Jordan. Good morning, James. Good morning, Ms. Perryman. How are you? Ah, oh, he sounds just like he did in high school. And we have Dante Jones. <laughs> Hi there, Miss Perryman. It's How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Oh, I just, James, first and foremost, let me tell the audience that James was my student while I was still teaching in high school. And he went on to Dwayne State University to still work on his dreams and cultivate his dreams as an actor and I was so proud to see you in that play in the fall I'm just so excited about that and um, then Dante tell me where you're from um, I'm from Detroit I'm born and raised uh, I went to communication and media arts high school did you yeah uh, DPS so yeah great school great school and James I've talked for you say something <laughs> <laughs> Say, so, what has it been like at Wayne State? Oh, at Wayne State, it's been amazing. I've had a great experience. Uh, professors are awesome. Um, the directors I've worked with are amazing, and I've had a wonderful experience. Yeah. Let's pull up to the... <laughs> um, so you've been studying acting? Yes, I have. I've been studying acting since freshman year. And this is your fourth year, this, right? Yes, this is my fourth year. Because... Uh, that it'll be my fourth year out in retirement. And this is just so ironic and so funny <laughs> for me. And uh, James was in the last play that I directed at Southfield High, which mm -hmm. was The Day the Music Died. 
And, yeah, of course, he will always be in my heart uh, because he did the right things with our words, mine and Orna Jones' word. And were you always in – what year are you, Dante? I'm, I'm actually a junior. This is my, my third year. So, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a junior. I've been at Wayne State for some time. I'm, I'm minor in music as well. Uh, with a speciality in vocal performance, but oh, acting really? is, my, is my major. Do you know Miss Brockington? <laughs> yes, that's my vocal teacher. <laughs> <laughs> She's a friend of mine. Good She's deal. a friend of mine, Small too. World. Yeah, and her sister's a choreographer. Paulette, yes. Yeah, Paulette. I, she I might used be working to, with her, actually. In fact, you say that. she choreographed the day the music wow. died. Oh. I mean, yes. I mean, <laughs> See, See? we're well, good people. See, in Detroit. I mean, it's a very small world. Yes. Very, very small yes, world. Is. Exciting. So, James, this is your last year. What are you going to do after that? Um, well, I was thinking about starting off in New York where I could start on start in Broadway and work my way up to film. Oh, really? You, yes. You're doing that thing again. <laughs> 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 well, you know... You, before you get there, there's some moves you have to make. I, I, I have right. a few. I have a few students there. Some are doing well, and some are doing. But I think that if you have faith in yourself first, yeah. you could do anything. Well, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a hard work, and I'm. But just gonna, you're up to it. Yes, I am. I'm up for the challenge. And what about you, Dante? Well, actually, uh, this this semester I'm applying for the BFA program, which you remember, I guess. Yes. BFA? Yeah, so BFA is a Bachelor of Fine Performing Arts, and right now I'm a BA, which allows me to minor in music. So I have a more concentrated time in, in, with, with classes and my education in regards to acting. Um, so I'll be there for probably another, an extra two years. Oh, that, but that's exciting. <laughs> that is so... It's my journey, and I, you know. Now tell us about the play. Tell us who you play, and what do you think of your characters? Well, I play the Agungun. He is the DJ in the town. He's the DJ. The DJ? He brings the, he brings the town to life. He brings the party. Uh, he's a really exciting character, and I'm really excited to get to become him. What, had you, what did you have to do as far as learning about this character, of, about stepping outside of yourself? <laughs> or did you step much? <laughs> or do you always bring the party with you? Well, I always bring the party with me, of course. But uh -huh. <laughs> this is one of my children. <laughs> but um, I looked online on YouTube and I studied this guy named Sissy Noby, who yes. is also a DJ in Louisiana. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he was really interesting. What about you, Dante? I, I'm, I'm the character Elegba. Um, and Elegba is uh, the trickster that Aku was talking about earlier. Yes. Oh, you'd um. be good at that. <laughs> I, you'd be so good at that. No, I see you as a scamp in so many ways. No, after I, I saw you, <laughs> after I saw you in our t our town, I, I saw the scope and I said, uh huh, I could see him. <laughs> yes. It's funny you mentioned that, Brenda. I was stage I was the stage manager in our town uh, in the fall semester. But yeah, I'm a, I'm Elegba. Um, and it's from the uh, the deity, the Yoruba deity, Ilegba Ishu, and he's he's um, a trickster. He's he's a, a teacher. He com he teaches communication and perception, and it's one thing that actually I've always thought about personally before I even got to being a part of this wonderful production and working with Aku was you know perception is a really big really big factor in a lot of things and how things turn out. So and how you look at things exactly. Yes, and how. People, you know, sometimes their perception of you mm -hmm. is not always what it, it what, what is it really you. Yeah, right, right, exactly. right, right, right. Perception, that's very important, very important. How has it been working with my friend Aku? Oh, <laughs> it has been really interesting. She is <laughs> amazing, and she's yes. taught us things that no director has ever taught us before, and I'm really excited to keep working with her. Yes, you have to, to yes. go to uh, Australia. But uh, what about you? I, I'm forever ecstatic to be able to work with Aku. Like we've become 
aside from what we're doing in the rehearsal room, we've become good friends. And, you know, I, it's just, it's only infused our work together because she's very collaborative, which I respect and appreciate so much. Mm -hmm. So many directors, which, you know, is never a bad thing, but, you know, could want one thing and go for that one thing, and we're doing that, and we don't have time for anything else. A cool, she wants us to play, she wants us to feel, she wants us to, she wants us to, you know, experience and go with our instinct. And then we can we can all collaborate on, you know, blocking and things like that based on our instincts and what we feel our character will be doing. And so that's just something I appreciate so much. Well, I think collaboration is really important too because you become closer as a cast Definitely member, great. cast also. Definitely. You really do once you collaborate. I mean, the director doesn't have to hold a whip. I want it this way, want it that way because a lot of times what the what the actors feel is so valuable. Very true. It's so very valuable. And it's funny you say that because one thing that we've, as she said, we are making discoveries every. We're still making. We made some last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's just thanks to Terrell's writing. Like it's an amazing play. He writes so well. But the point I was trying to make is that we we all have. How do I put it? We all have a certain aspect of our own, our own, our own past, and being able to take certain pieces that are important from our own past and collaborate and telling this story of our generation has been such a privilege and a blessing, right. because the story is of our generation, and that's one that's one aspect that we bring into our collaborative. When you bring your collaborative sense work memories yeah. and all of that, exactly. <laughs> all of that. Oh, oh, I miss the theater. Anyway, guys. Break a leg next, well, thank, two thank weeks you. from now. Yeah, thank you. And I know you will discover more within the next yeah, two weeks. Uh, and I'm so excited for you. I'm going to definitely try to make it down there because uh, Please I, do. I'd love to see you perform. And James was in our town, too, and he played several characters. I was proud of that. Yeah, thank you. And um, so everybody, February 7th, the Bonstell Theater performances on Friday and Saturday and Thursday, I think at 8 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. And then for those two weekends, and then on Sundays at 2 p.m., right? Yes. I got it, down packed. And you could buy your tickets <laughs> early. You could buy groups, uh, group sales and everything. Just call the Bonsdale, Wayne State University. So, gentlemen, thanks a million for showing up this morning oh, I miss thank the you for having us. oh thank James. you so much for having it's us so Prince. great this is like full circle moment <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment with our special guest Tori from General Motors Good morning, good morning, and welcome once again to the Brenda Perryman Show right here on TV 33 WHPR, Comcast 20 in Detroit. And boy, you know February is Black History Month, but it's Black History Month for me, Black History Year all year. We should be learning something, we should be doing something, and General Motors does a very, very spectacular event in February. And... Um, I have Tori here from GM. What was your last name again? Moncrief. Moncrief. I, yes, ma'am. I don't know how. I, oh, where, where are you from, Tori? I'm born and raised in Detroit. Oh, and she's <laughs> saying, ma'am. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Isn't that sweet? So uh, where did you go to high school? I went to Southfield Lathrop. Oh, you school. went to Lathrop. Yes, ma'am. I went to Southfield Lathrop for high school, and um, I went to Howard University for undergrad. What year were you at? How what years were you at? I graduated. So I feel like in 2003, so I was at Howard from 2003 until 2007. Okay. And then I went to Wayne State for my master's. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. excellent, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent, excellent. And you're at Wayne State, your communication? Um, I received my master's from Wayne State in corporate communications um, and PR. So my Wonderful. master's is in corporate communications and public relations. And so now I'm at GM doing internal um, communications and marketing. What does that entail? Well, my position is quite unique because there are certain levels of communication within the organization. So you have corporate communication that strictly communicates to the organization and to the outside um, consumer. And then you have pockets of communications that just focus on the division specifically. So okay. I work in communications for IT. So I communicate in my team, we communicate um, to the business 
for IT purposes. So if there's something that's, you know, we just moved um, email, um, we went from Lotus Notes to Outlook. So oh, okay. my team communicated that to the to the whole organization, trying to get people ready, sending out direct communications, marketing events, trying to just do you get like people. it? I do. It's exciting. It's it's different. Um, it's you know when you think of IT, you think of people fixing the computer, <laughs> and you know you think of you know sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, but I can. But see no, how it's, it very, be it's very exciting. exciting. It's I can very see exciting, how it and I'm be. learning so much, and that's what's important to me. So, well, the more you know, you know, education absolutely is power, and you just want to broaden your horizon. And I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. Excellent. So, lot. why don't you tell us about? the Black History Month program this year. Yes, yeah, so we're super excited about it. It's February 14th um, at 7 p.m. It's completely sold out. Um, it's going wow. to be at the Marriott um, in the Renaissance Center, and Buick is a sponsor, and it's titled Building Hopes and Dreams. And so... Building Hopes and Dreams. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell us a little about the program Absolutely. Itself? So we have um, Manny Ahomi. He is the keynote speaker for the event. Um, we have... Now, he tell us about him. So he runs an organization where he provides assistance to children in need. And so he is just... I mean, he's building hopes and dreams all over. And he's doing a special... Um, feet washing ceremony on Thursday. So we're, Really? Yes, it's going to be amazing. So we're oh doing that goodness. Thursday, and I'll be covering that from an employee journalist perspective. So uh, a feet washing ceremony, that is And he's giving children shoes. So he's oh, doing that's feet fabulous. wash. Yes, yes, it's amazing. So he's doing a feet washing ceremony, and then he'll be providing children shoes. Um, and that's Thursday. And then Friday is the ceremony where we'll have Eric Benet. He'll be the musical guest. Um, Rhonda Walker is the mistress of ceremony, and then he's the keynote speaker. So it's just a, it's an amazing time to not only highlight African Americans in the month of Black History Month, but it's just also a time just to show how much Buick is doing in the community. Because Buick does so much in the community. What are some of the things that Buick does? So, for example, um, Buick has a program called Buick Achievers, where they provide scholarships um, to college for high school students and for undergrad students in college. And so you have to be um, you have to be a leader in your community. You have to be involved in community services. You have to have good grades. But if how you, do how do young people find out about this? I mean it's they can go online. They can Google Buick Achiever Scholarship Program if you are in you high hear school. That, yes. If you general. are yes, if you're a high school student and you have an interest in technology and business and you want to be involved in the auto, automotive companies um, in the future, go. Look on Don't it. you find that a lot of young people are so into technology now? <laughs> yes, in, compa in comparison to when I was growing up, we didn't have a we didn't have social media, we didn't have Facebook and Twitter, and I got a cell phone when I was in high school. But these kids have it today at and ten. You had to hide that cell yes. phone. I mean, you really had like to hide your teachers it. did not play that. They would take your phone. I know. Like no, I took some. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think that. Um, it's amazing, and you can do. You we can't function without technology. We really can't, right. and so many people are afraid of it. But it's such a beautiful thing when you embrace it. You can do so much. You can work smarter and not harder with and it. And not abuse it. Absolutely. So we want to. We you know it's important that we have you know technology etiquette. That's very important. But at the same time, we want we want to make sure that people are well educated. It's so important in spreading the word. Absolutely. And letting people know what you're doing. Absolutely. And, uh, that's very important. That's the way I get a lot of information out about my show. Yes. You know, it's getting people to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. it's, it's letting a big group of people know what's going what's on. What's going with. on. And we want people to know that. We want people to go on the website. We want people to look it up. We want what is the website um, you can address? Just, I don't. It's BuickAchievers.org, um, but you can Google it. You can, bu you, I'm sorry, you can Google Buick Achievers and it will just pop right up and you'll see it. Yep, it's a scholarship program and it can tell you, um, you can look at past people who have received the scholarships and what they're doing and how it helped them. You can go on and see the qualifications about what you need to do in order to apply. Um, the deadline, I believe, is coming up in February, so you need to go Let's on take a ASAP look at that. Yes. Yes. And, and find out what you need to do. Because mm -hmm. it's nothing like getting help going to Absolutely. college. Absolutely, and it's, it's so, I mean, they've awarded over millions of dollars. So there is money to be received. And I just oftentimes think, even when I was in college, 
people just don't know. People just don't research. People don't take the time, especially young people, to go out and seek that information. It's there. And if you're interested, apply. And so, uh, so you're with IT, but you're not focused with Buick all the time. No, ma'am. You're with the whole, whole thing. The whole Buick company. has a beautiful set of cars. They by the do. Way. It was so funny because we have this program at GM called the Ambassador Program where employees can um, test different cars for a week. Yeah, I tested and I had one. A, and I had a Buick um, Regal. Oh, well, I had the LeSabre. Oh. Yes, yes, it's nice. Yeah, I, I, I was cute in it, but yes. I, and the lacrosse is so nice. I know. And yeah, Buick had some really nice cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Well, nice maybe cars. it was. No, it was the Lesabre. Uh, which one? The lacrosse. I, it's the newest one. I mean, the newest style. <gasps> oh, one. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. What color did you have there? I had black with the cream Ooh. color seats. Did you have it in the winter right now? Yeah. With the heated seats? Y yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. That was cute. <laughs> no, that's all I can say. But uh, it's so great to know that Buick is doing these Absolutely. kind of things. Absolutely. In, in, in the, the community. community. Yeah, because you can only you can only go so far and you have to pull back that hand right you have to bring someone else along you have to. you have to and so we're in you know we're in an organization where we thrive off of people with technology and people with skills and we want to educate the next generation so that they can come on and continue the legacy that general motors has laid you know it's so funny my daughter works one of my daughters works in one of the plants oh cool um but you have to be able to do computers in the plant yes. too. So the people people need to get over that fear of mm -hmm, technology mm -hmm. because I heard a man uh, on radio talk about they need to bring back some more fa bring more factories in here and everything. It's not the same old factory it's that not. my father it's worked not. in. It's not, and it's and, not, and you don't continue to grow. Keep if you keep doing the same, same old thing, thing. Yeah. over and over. Yeah. You get behind. Well, Absolutely. And we know that time waits for no one. Waits for no one. I mean, technology waits for no one because you could buy a new phone today and next week. It's you know they it'll have, be changed. It'll, it'll be, be upgraded. So not, yes, with a whole new feature. Thought. And Absolutely. if you have a contract, you have to wait another year. I know. I have to wait another year. Oh, I'm really ready too. for that new iPhone. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. well, they say there's going to be a bigger iPhone. I'm sure. Well, I have the Galaxy. My sister had this. She loves it. I yeah. love it. I love it. I'm too. Team iPhone though. Team I know. <laughs> so is my daughter. <laughs> team iPhone. I'm Team iPhone. Ah. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> Screen is small. It's still small. But anyway, what would you, a young woman who grew up in the area, tell young women out there and young men what they should be focused on in high school in order to have a successful high school career? That's a very good question. Um, I would tell any young person who is in high school to focus on writing to focus on reading. I think those are key elements. You can't do anything if you cannot write correctly and if you cannot read. Um, I would also focus on technology and math. Um, that's the future. And um, I would really, really encourage students to get a mentor. I think when I was in high school, I had someone, whether it was a teacher or someone I was interning with, I had someone that I could go to and I could talk to and I could, I could seek knowledge and guidance from. And so I think those things are important. Focus on getting good grades and learning. I think it's so, because senior year, I mean, it's over for you. Yeah, yeah. So you can count senior yeah. year out. Yeah. So that freshman to junior year, those are the critical years. Those are the years where... And that's where, what the colleges look at. Absolutely. Those are the years that you should focus on. I mean, we all, want, we all want to have fun and a good time, but high school is only four years and it flies by. And so I would just tell students to think about what they really want to do. What do you want to do when you grow up? What kind of career do you have? What kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Start researching those things that pique your interest and then start talking to people about it and start seeing what classes, what subjects align with that and, and um, hone in on those type of things. Stay Absolutely. focused. It, stay focused. And as hard as it is to stay focused, it is. you have to stay focused and have positive friends. Absolutely. Have friends who have some of the same interests as you. You could be friendly with everybody, mm -hmm. but the people who are your core group. They have to encourage you. I look at my girlfriends and even some of my male friends that I went to high school with, and we are all doing so well. And it's because we push one another. You know, we always were there. You're not doing this. You should be doing this. I'm doing it. 
So right. you want to encourage, you want to be around people who are going to encourage you, support you, and push you to be the best you. And that's what it's all about. And so by the time senior year is here, I mean, it's all about those senior pictures. It's pictures, it's, all it's about, prom. Uh, all you know. of that. I mean, they start on that. Yes. So, I mean, so I was early. leaving school going to look at my prom dress. Like, oh, no. I know. <laughs> school and it's over. about those applications and it those is. essays you have to write with those a applications, too. Because you have to think about it. You put your college applications in in what October in fall in the fall you know where you're going by what February March you know where right. you're going to school so senior year I mean it's all about preparation getting to the next level so it's that freshman to junior year where the work has to come in where the grades have to speak for themselves because if the college if the colleges are looking at your grades they're looking at junior the junior and sophomore year well let's talk about corporations then. Okay. What do corporations look at as far as college is concerned? Or, or do they look at just college or internships? What Absol all do they look at? Absolutely. When, before they hire you? Um, I think if you're a, a new grad coming in straight from, from college, they don't necessarily look for a lot of work experience because obviously you're just graduating from college, but internships are important. They want to know that you've, you know, you've reached out and you've gone to an organization and work that you've been able to um, complete tasks and see them through. Um, they're looking at the classes that you took in college. Are you capable of doing certain things? When you're a new grad, you I, I encourage students, especially people who major in communications and marketing, to in turn because when you walk into the door, they want you to be a, to at least know the basics. And school only teaches you so much. You have to have that hands on. You application. have to have that application, application is so important. Absolutely. And so we tell students, I tell people all the time, especially young people, intern, intern, intern. If you're in college, there's no reason you should not be interning during the year, during the um, school semester, and in the summer. You should always have a summer internship. Right. You right. have to. It's You have to build your resume. And you have to be aggressive about it. You absolutely you do. You have to. I was talking to a friend of mine's little sister. She is graduating um, in, with a PR major from North Carolina um, Central, and she has no internships. Oh, my goodness. You know, she has no internship, and she wants to go to New York. There are so many students who want to do PR who have – three and four internships who have portfolios laid out. It's competitive out here. It's very competitive. It's competitive, and you want to make sure that you're laying the, the foundation that you can be successful. And the only way to do that is to compete. And if you want to compete, you have to be prepared. How do people find internships? I think you just, you, you, every, every corporation has internships, right? You want to get people in the door, you want to teach them, and you may not necessarily want to pay them what you would pay someone um, coming straight out of school. You Well, all internships aren't paid. Not necessarily, but a lot of them are. And so oh. you can research internships, and you, know, you can go to any corporation. They have summer internships. If you're looking for a summer internship, you should be looking now because most of the good internships are filled by March. So if you're looking to get a summer internship starting, let's say, June, you need to be looking right now. I interned at Channel 4 when I was in college. I interned at WGLB. I interned at PR firms. You just you have to find out what it is that you're interested in. Go to that particular website and search. Call. I don't have. I didn't have a problem picking up the phone and calling somebody. Are you guys looking for interns? You just have to be aggressive. Nobody's going to give you anything, so you have Absolutely. to be aggressive. Absolutely, yeah. and you have to try harder. Make sure you keep your character together. Absolutely, don't post things on Facebook that no. should not be posted. Because they or do Instagram. check. They do, they check, do it. check. They do. They do check your Facebook. They do check your Twitter and your Instagram, your Vine. They they check all those things because they want to make sure that they're hiring someone who's going to represent them in a proper way. In a proper manner. Mm -hmm. So the Black History Month program that General Motors is giving of Buick. Is Buick the sponsor, sponsor mm -hmm. of it. Building is, Hopes and Dreams. Is February 14th. At 7 p.m. At the Renaissance Center. Yes, ma'am, the Marriott and the Renaissance Center. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Eric Benet is singing. Yes, which is perfect, right? Because it's, it's Valentine's Day. And so even though you'll be at the Black History Program, you'll still get that little romantic feel that you're looking for. So Eric Benet will be there serenading the crowd. We have Manny Ohami, who is going to be... 
um, oh, the I can't keynote wait speaker. To hear I him. know. Oh, I can't wait. I know. To hear him. I, I'm, I'm Where is he going to be washing the children's feet? To, Do you know, I don't have the exact location right now, but I can find out and let you know. I'm going to be covering that story. Wow. So what I'll do is I'll just you know, I'll let you know where it's going now, to be. Now, where is he from? From he's from he's Africa. From, mm -hmm. He's from he's from Africa. Yeah, and I'm interviewing him so I can. Where I'm does gonna, he live? At this present time, I'm not sure. I'm not of sure where he's city. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I'm not sure where he lives at this present time, but I am interviewing him, so I'm going to find out all that information. Oh, that is mm -hmm. that is great. Yeah, I'm going to find now out I all that information. You're engaged. Yes, ma'am. I congratulations. Am. Thank you. I have to say this <laughs> Valentine's Day. She's going to yes. Be I got engaged over Thanksgiving. He oh. did a a very 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 beautiful, elaborate proposal. Um, with he surprised me and flew off my friends and family in and. All his family came in, and so oh I met him goodness. at Howard. I'm blessed. I really. Where does he live? He lives here now. He oh, moved to great. Detroit. I know. Oh, yes. that's exciting. There's still some great guys out here. They yeah. are. Yes. They are. They <laughs> he are. moved to um he moved to Detroit two years ago. And, and so, so uh, what's his name? His what's name it? is his name is Frederick Turner. Yep, Frederick. Congratulations. Thank to you both so of you. much. Both Thank of you. you. When is the wedding? Um, May 2015. We're doing Memorial Day weekend next year. Wonderful. So, yep, mm -hmm. People uh, people sure do these things in advance because you, you it's so to. expensive. Ooh, we got the florist quote. Um, was it Tuesday? And I said, ooh, mommy, did you see this quote? She said, yes, I saw it. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm glad we start planning ahead of time. Yeah, you have to. Things are expensive. Yeah. And you invite so many people. And Well, you want to. Yeah, absolutely. You want to. You want, you want to, to have so. it like you want. Mm -hmm, you do. Well, Tori Moncrief. Thank you. Oh, thank you, you so much for having me. You the Moncriefs from Southfield High? Um, we had some over there. What Moncriefs did you have at Southfield High? We had some. I'll tell you. Okay, yeah, tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join us this afternoon for Table Talk with Brenda Perryman at 1 o'clock. We have some great topics for you today, and we may have a surprise call-in guest. I'm waiting to hear from her. So I'll see you at 1 o'clock, and thank you once again, Thank Tori. you so much for having me. And... Have a good day. Bye. Bye.